let me know when you start recording. Okay, thank you. So uh, welcome and um, salam alaikum everyone. Thank you for joining on Sunday. Uh, my name is Soban Jalil. I am at, uh, based in Houston, Texas, and I'll be hosting today's session. Um, so this is Park Launch, and just want to give a one minute intro to Park Launch. Park Launch is a is a forum for around 1300 plus uh, Pakistani diaspora around the world, uh, which are connecting or helping to connect the businesses, startups and ecosystem in Pakistan with the Pakistani diaspora in, in USA and around the world. So we have a lot of uh, different uh, sectors in education technology, social entrepreneurship, investments and uh, technology. And uh, Ali is uh, one of the key members. Uh, I'm supporting it as well. And we all are one team. So if you need more details, please visit parklaunch.com and you can subscribe to some of the older sessions and upcoming new section, sessions as well. So with that, uh, let me just uh, do a quick introduction with uh, uh, Dr. Asan Rabani. He's our, uh, he's our uh, guest speaker today. Uh, so Dr. Asan is based in Karachi right now. And uh, he is the CEO for Child Life Foundation. And uh, Dr. Essen and I share some common backgrounds. We both are engineering background, and we both spend some of our lives uh, span in GE to learn a few things on our way. And then we both were involved uh, heavily with TCF as well. So uh, and now our third connection is to Park Launch on this Child Life Foundation. Uh, so we are excited to have Dr. Essen with us. And uh, thank you, Dr. Essen. Um, all yours. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ahsan Rabbani and uh, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to talk to you guys and get your feedback on uh, what we do. Uh, so let me start the slide and uh, hopefully I'll be done in 15 to 20 minutes. Um, just a quick check. Soban, can you see the full screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, I've kept it brief and simple, and we are talking about how we leverage technology to save lives. Um, we'll share the experience of our 10 year journey and where we are headed. But at the onset, what I would say is I've been in the nonprofit sector for over 20 years, and all organizations make a big impact, they make a positive impact. But rarely you get a chance where you can impact the system. And I think the, what the story of child life is, how you can use technology to impact the social system of Pakistan. So with that context, I'll begin. Um, briefly about me, um, still trying to figure out what to do in life. I started with engineering, moved into management, ended up with health system, but I'm grateful to organizations like ExxonMobil and GE, um, where I learned the ropes of management, which is really the true challenge in Pakistan when it comes to social issues. Pakistan is not a poor country. I believe Pakistan is a poorly managed country. So if you improve the governance and management, even with the limited resources, we can do much better. So this is, sort of a boilerplate for child life. What do we address? We address the biggest mortality reason. There are 400,000 children who die every year in Pakistan. And these are children who are below the age of five. So this is absurd that in the 20, 21st century, where we believe that 80% of these deaths are preventable, these deaths are still happening. We know the causes of pneumonia and diarrhea, very cost effective solutions are available. It's, a, it's an issue of implementing those. So Child Life Foundation started 10 years ago and they focused on improving emergency rooms for children in public sector hospitals. When you want to save children at that level, 400,000 a year, you need to do many things. But if you can focus on one thing, if you improve the emergency rooms of government hospitals where the poorest of the poor bring their children for treatment, 
half of these lives can be after child life. So no wonder the survival rate has jumped from 20% to 90% plus. So this is quadruple because you bring in systems, you bring in trained doctors, good management, medicines, and it works. There's no rocket science to it. And we are able to do this large scale work, high impact work at very low cost. So if you are treating a million children, it has the cost of $7 per child in the emergency room. If you want to look at the context, this, it costs $707 if you take your child to emergency room. The average cost of treatment in the US is $707 for children in emergency room. So it is about a hundred times difference. The salary factor is about 20 times difference. So that goes to show that um, you can build very effective and efficient systems in Pakistan. So after the boilerplate, what we do, I want to get you a little deeper into the scenario. This is one of the oldest and the best hospitals of Pakistan. This is in 2011, the children emergency room at civil hospital Karachi. You have definitely heard of Dow Medical College, Dow graduates are one of the largest diaspora group in USA. This is the kind of facilities where they get trained in and millions of people who come in get treated in such facilities. So 10 years ago, we adopted this one and the same room looks like this today. But the miracle is not that we change it to this one. The miracle is sustained change. Even after 10 years, it looks like this one. So this is the visual transformation of what it was and what it can become. No wonder the survival rate goes from 20% to 90%. Now, when we talk about technology, there are a couple of things I will briefly touch upon. Electronic medical records, life-saving equipment, training which is online, telemedicine for a second doctor's opinion, queue management system inside for patient control, how to measure patient satisfaction, and how do you measure standards? You know, technology helps you do that. And I'll show you, take you through that, through a little bit of pictures. So queue management system is very critical. If you think about it, if you do not have electronic medical records, there's no accountability of what was what the patient received, when he received it. So it's very important. So we, are, we don't computerize these just for the sake of it. It's very glamorous to say we are paperless environment. We are, we are paperless environment or we are um, fully computerized. What is more important is that we are able to make sure that medical protocols are being followed. And that's what computerization does. What you see on this screen is a cow, computer on wheels. So you can take this to a bed where you can get the vitals of the child. Every treatment is done. The timestamps come from the computer. Can, this can, is can all Sorry. of us can please mute? Um, computerization also helps us in pharmacy. So of course you need full pharmacy. Typically in government hospitals, what is what a poor man is told? Go and get this medicine from outside. So yes, you provide the medicines. That's the easy part. What is more important is you make sure it is all computerized. And why that helps is every year in Pakistan, half a million people die because of wrong dosage. 
Now this is measured through system. So a doctor enters a system, the pharmacist has a right to correct it and also note down how many doctors made which mistakes so they can be coached into improving it and you're able to stop that. And the second advantage of a computerized pharmacy is that you don't get stockouts. You have a material resource planning into place. The doctors and nurses that we get come from the Pakistani educational system. So you have to train to bring it to international standards. So we have different programs. We have a certification program with Dow University Health Sciences. This year, we have a one-year program with John Hopkins University. So the Pakistani diaspora helps run this program. There's Dr. Faisal Qureshi from Dallas, um, who, is, who came and conducted the training. But more importantly, we have put all these trainings onto a Moodle platform and we conduct a weekly CME with every staff of child life. So this is clinical training, continuous training, and because you don't learn in the training room, you learn slowly and gradually all the time. And I'm very glad to say that we have Dr. Mahmood Khichi who has joined this from Houston. He's one of the, the people who was in Dow Medical College. Technology also helps us with life-saving equipment. You need cardiac monitors, infusion pumps, um, maybe warmers. So technology is not just computer. Technology is also comes into a lot of other medical devices. But the biggest impact that we have seen in recent years is getting a second opinion from a senior doctor. So in the resuscitation rooms, where most critical children are brought in, a doctor sitting at civil hospital is able to zoom in and look at a patient and consult with a doctor on the ground. This consultation is of immense importance because you could do a good catch, you could prevent a mistake, you could zoom in from a very simple HD camera into dilated pupils of the child. And you can also look at the cardiac monitor which installed there, a simple connectivity so the cardiac monitor in Hyderabad is connected via net to the telemedicine center in civil hospital. So they can look at the cardiac rhythms of the child. Now, this is what patient support looks like. It's easy to computerize or automate a system where you have 20,000 patients coming in like our Khan hospital. But when you have got 150,000 patients coming annually, this is what it looks like. This is from National Institute of Child Health. So imagine how stressed doctors and nurses would be with this kind of patient load. Everybody says, treat my child first. So what we have been able to do is put in a queue management system, just like it happens in a bank. You come in, you get a token and Mothers do not have to stand with their child in their arms. I'll give you an example. On the left, you see a queue management system example. And then the nurse is treating one patient at a time. Beyond technology, remember we are treating humans. It's very important we get their feedback because these people are poor. They do not have they do have a language barrier and do, do not have money. They are not respected by the system. So the only way we give them power is by giving them the power of vote. So every patient that comes in, we capture their mobile number. They get an SMS about satisfaction within 24 hours of discharge from the emergency room. And the question is about satisfied or not satisfied. So we are hitting between 76 to 77% satisfaction from Karachi to Quetta to Larkana from our patients. Those who say we are not satisfied, they get a call. And that's a 13 point questionnaire, so we learn. This satisfaction is linked with the annual KPI performance of the doctors. The international benchmark from US is that emergency satisfaction is usually 64%. People are not happy because of waiting times and they are distressed. So. We are glad that we are beyond, better than international benchmark and our hope is that we'll cross 80% this year. So this SMS system is also very important. It creates a link between us and the patient even after they have left the ER. That's another factor of technology. 
And without automation, without your records, we will not be able to get certification from the charity regulator, which is Pakistan Center of Philanthropy in this case, or ISO 9000 2015, because you have ERPs for finance, for procurement, for HR, for donor management. So all that data is available and transparent. This is our accreditation process from the regulator in, in Canada. So I don't know if we have any person from Canada on this uh, session right now, but if you take your child to an emergency room in Toronto or Montreal or anywhere in Canada, they would be accredited by the regulator and would have a patient sc safety score of minimum 95% to be able to operate. We had our audit last year and we scored 87.5% on the same checklist. We hope that in about two years time, we'll get the certification from Canadian accreditation organization, which would mean that whether you take your child to an ER in Toronto or into civil hospital or Leari or Kurangi or Quetta, it would have the same quality. So that's uh, what we are aiming for. Um, very important. Um, about financial audits and operational audits. So we get it done by Ferguson's. And the, the, the audit is this time because of COVID was mostly done online. And uh, so technology was helpful because of a full ERP and financial systems available. Everybody's paid directly to the bank, whether it's an employee or a vendor. So a nurse in Nawabsha gets a salary into her bank account directly on the last day of the month. And since that is a biometrically certified account, you, the chances of having a ghost employee are limited. During the pandemic, which uh, is still going on, um, we separated the ERs into a green zone and a red zone, red zone for COVID suspects. Of course, you see our doctors and nurses in full PPE gear, but when a patient came in and was came out to be positive, we were able to do contract tracing and work with the government. So the technology element was very helpful because we are capturing mobile numbers uh, and we are by law required to give that information to the government. A little more pictures from the COVID experience. Um, um, and I'll just throw in this picture because at, um, most of the year we are very dry and then we have one week where we have urban flooding um, so um, you have three feet water outside ERs. So what do you do? Patients are still coming in because poor parents would carry their children on their shoulders if they are very sick. So when ERs are functioning, we had limited staff because the shifts were not able to come. So through WhatsApp, we were able to give consultation from the central side. It was called doctor on wheels. So we believe that these tests like COVID and urban flooding and long power breakdowns, you, your team becomes more battle hardened. Now, for the real techies, this is the, uh, the best part of the presentation. So I talked about telemedicine and we are running 10 emergency rooms. This is the central site where we have doctors sitting, looking at screens, six, seven screens, each doctor, and then they can zoom in on any one particular one. Now we have reached out to the secondary level hospital, which are also called district hospitals or Tehsil hospitals. The picture you see is in Noshero Firoz, a district hospital, the signage on the left. And there's a, there's a government doctor wearing the lab coat on the right. And he is using an IP phone to consult by the patient who's lying on bed. And sitting from Karachi, we can zoom in and look at the breathing rate of the child, whether this, this skin is pale or not, and advise. And we have a nurse on ground to give the medicine. So this is the network we are going beyond uh, large hospitals into every district. Um, these are the 10 emergency rooms we are running. In Karachi, it is Civil Hospital, National Institute of Child Health, Warren Kurangi, Leari, Abbasi Shaheed. Outside Karachi, we are running the Medical College Hospital in Nawabsha, Larkana, Sakkar, Hyderabad, and Quetta. We are in negotiations for PIMS 
and hopefully then Punjab and KPK. Uh, so total our emergency rooms and satellite centers in secondary hospitals, we are today present in 32 hospitals. So it's not, even if you were running one hospital, that would be good. But Pakistan has about 500 government hospitals. So the question is, yes, you're doing an impact at one, great. But if you have an opportunity to reach out and do something better for all 500, then that's impacting the system. And that's the journey we are undertaking. So if you look at this uh, uh, map, these are the five ERs, which we call hubs in Karachi. Then we established in Hyderabad, Nawab Shah Larkana Sakhar. This year we established 30, 30 um, satellite centers. So if you look at the northernmost part of, of Sindh, which is Kashmir, so patient comes in, the doctor there consults a doctor in, um, in from Kashmir, if you can see the cursor, receives the call from Karachi. The doctor in Karachi sees the patient in Kashmir and they treat it. For example, the doctor in Kashmir one day wanted to give a patient drip of 300 milliliter. But the doctor, the senior doctor in Karachi advised if you do weight-based calculation, it should be 120 ml. So this is a good catch. Otherwise, that excess drip would have damaged the child. The second child that came in had pneumonia. Looking at the x-ray through the camera, the doctor said, this is not plain pneumonia. It is, it is low bar pneumonia. So instead of one antibiotic, you need to give a combination of two. And after that, you need to send the child to stay in a hospital which was 90 minutes away at Sakhar. So this, this hub and spoke is not only you consult, you treat, but you also refer. So when the child arrived in Sakhar in 90 minutes, the parents didn't have to run from pillar to post. They were able to go straight into the recess and get good care. And stayed there for a day and then two days in the ward and then discharge. So this is what we are doing right now. And the biggest impact is that we are, we are educating the doctor in Kashmir in this process. The doctor in Kashmir sees 50,000 patients a year. So this is the network we have developed for SIN. And the government has asked us to now go to all the, these blue hospitals in SIN, which is the Tehsil or sub-district level hospitals. And we hope to accomplish that in two years. And that these are about 50 Tehsil hospitals followed by about 43 tehsils of sin, which do not have a, a secondary hospital. So we would go into a rural health center or a BHU. This would cover the whole population of about five and a half uh, crores of sin. So inshallah in four years, we'll be able to do that. And beyond sin, the, uh, we, uh, this is the Balochistan map uh, with about 33 districts. We, the government has asked us to connect all the districts to the same pattern as SIN. Nothing succeeds like success. And hopefully by end of 2021, we will be uh, in every district of Quetta. We already are in Pasheen and Hub. So um, please pray for us that uh, the ambitious agenda we have uh, to make Pakistan child safe is successful. And it is a Pakistani project. So thanks a lot. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. Uh, great introduction and uh, a lot of uh, good work going on. So, um, so um, any, any questions from the audience, please, um, if you want to uh, type in the, in the chat window, we can take it from there um, or, uh, or, or any other details we would like to know. So, so, so Dr. Hassan, just, just to, uh, I mean, it's a phenomenal uh, progress. Do you want to, expand onto your background from uh, corporate America and, and from there, how did you transition and learn this uh, hub and spoke model, you know, uh, from different uh, uh, industries into the healthcare sector in Pakistan to, def uh, to solve the problem? Any, any, any insight on that? Sure, I think if you think of any distribution channel, um, at ExxonMobil, we were uh, marketing lubricants and uh, you, you expand with a supply chain model, you have large hubs. So anybody who's into distribution would understand you cannot su be supplying from Karachi to uh, Kashmir. There needs to be your management capacity, 
and your uh, assets all along the way. And it's just like uh, any corporation, whether it is multinational or private would be doing that. And then you develop your people. It's good management practices. Building a team is important. Relationship with the government is important. Relationship with the Pakistanis who are supporting this is critical. So um, we just, uh, I'm saying we could put all this effort and uh, to sell oil or lubricants, which is great. Uh, but um, if you could use the same skills and time and effort to contribute to the social sector, it's, it's a great uh, opportunity. That's good. That's good. We have uh, one question, kind of two questions on the similar lines, but I'll, I'll ask. So Armagan is asking, what are some of the ways Pakistani diaspora in the U.S. can help to scale this great effort? Thank you so much. We have received a lot of help from the Pakistani diaspora. Um, I mentioned that doctors, Pakistani doctors spread all over USA and Canada have joined hands to provide training through Skype, and when they visit Pakistan, face-to-face -face training to our doctors, that's helpful. Um, the second part is they have raised funds for us. We receive tax-exempt donations both in USA and Canada uh, since we are registered. Um, so that is, is helpful because we, while a significant portion of our funding is from the government, but that funding is uh, unpredictable and and gets delays. So it's very important that we, and to maintain our independence um, and not get pressurized by the government, we, we try to um, maintain our financial independence also. Okay, good, good, thank you. Um, I, I have another question from uh, Sadaf Aslam and she's asking, how is the organization connected with the government supported ERs in regards to shared responsibility and resources? So I think, Question is more how you're working with the government sector and okay. what are the lessons learned from that perspective as well? Okay, we, we are in a, we are always learning. Um, and so the first thing we did was with the government, we signed an MOU and the MOU said, we will come in to fill in the gaps. Now, as we moved in, we found out there were greater gaps and the government um, was, uh, had a governance issue. There's, it's difficult to fire um, or hold accountable a government employee. So it started with janitorial team, it's security. So now our model is that we go in, uh, we need about 10,000 square feet of space for a 50 bedded emergency room. We have 100 staff for each emergency room. Um, the government gives us their residents, the postgraduate students who are uh, working in pediatrics department. In some places, government has given us their nurses. Some of them work, some of them don't work. So those are challenges. Um, I think, uh, so at, at the government, you have to work at multiple levels. You have to understand, it's easy to blame the government, but once you are inside, you realize, um, even uh, they, their hands are tied. They, are, they, they spend 20 years in the same scale. Um, there's a lot of politicization there. Um, so it makes it difficult for people to remain motivated in the government sector. But what do you do is you engage them. And how do you engage uh -huh. them? Especially residents. Uh, there are some residents who don't come. I mean, but if you help them pass their exam by training them. So it has to be what's in it for me. So residents feel if we work closely with child life, we will learn and we'll pass our exam. And the exam is the biggest thing in life for them. The, the FCPS four-year program they do. At the ministry level, we have to follow what Bill Gates says, make it a win-win-win, where the poor people get services as a win, where the government gets a win by getting votes, and we get a win as a charity by getting funds and administrative space from the government. I see. That's good. Good. Uh, one more question in the, in the chat window is, what has been your biggest pain point? in this government, whole process? Government, dealing with the government. <laughs> it is not for the faint hearted. It's easy to start your one hospital or two hospitals, a totally private, but then we would not be talking 32 hospitals. We would not be dreaming of 150 hospitals. So we would be caught in, in one. We would only be doing Karachi. We would not be talking about now Shero Feroz or Kashmo or Mia Channu or Atak. Yeah. 
so so i think it the, the pain is worth it just like any relationship it takes a lot of effort uh, the health secretary changes every 3 months uh, so you have to work at it uh, i think we were lucky or by mm -hmm. uh, by a twist of fate we had coming from a non medicine or a non healthcare related background how did you learn this new um i would say sector and navigate through that and that's an interesting sure. question from everybody who's trying to switch to, from non healthcare to healthcare yeah yeah so everybody okay. listen okay. up i guess <laughs> so, so so two things uh, i think the as i said they could have appointed a doctor in my place the reason mm -hmm. the board and these are businessmen of 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 the one of the, the most successful businessmen um textile and other industries and manufacturing they said we want a management person because for example today child life has 180 doctors so i don't decide what should be the medical protocol i have a advisory committee which does that i make sure that i hear everybody's opinion and the the decision making process there if i was a pediatrician so i said this is the protocol then that's it it would have been done so there's a certain advantage of not being a doctor so i am dependent mm -hmm. on my doctors to do that my own Good background uh, i did a phd in health in um, business administration and my focus was my thesis was on health management that made me read anybody who's gone through the phd process you have to read about 500 papers to do that so by that knowledge of public health and health management if i have you know even some of that absorbed inside and when i have discussed with the doctors i gain their respect because doc my own doctors would not have given me respect if i didn't know something about health management so if i am able to have a dialogue with them about mm -hmm. public health and issues and the pros and cons so so they uh, uh, half of them believe that i have a medical degree <laughs> <laughs> that's good that that's good but good 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 feedback uh, so we have two more other interesting questions so one is coming up do you have any data so far with the implementation that the main outcome to decrease mortality in children is changing and it it's it's different that's right it's difficult to measure mortality at a at large scale but uh, two things have happened one as uh, 2012 versus 2017 the child under 5 mortality in pakistan in sindh has dropped from 8.9% to 7.4% so this is the national government statistics so we okay. cannot claim direct um benefit of that uh, but it is one of those initiatives towards it sindh government has recently announced that there's the 7.4 has further gone down they have they are about to publish that paper and they are claiming now they are claiming that their partnership with child life has contributed towards that i believe it's a multiple thing um, but if at government hospitals you are improving the quality so it's difficult to directly measure it but uh, mm -hmm. the overall indicators are coming down and on that note i would like to say something which which, which actually पाकिस्तान अभी साउथ अफ्रीका के साथ क्रिकेट मैच में तो बड़ा आगे जा रहा है ना उसकी खुशी बहुत है पिंडी में मैच हो रहा है इंडिया पाकिस्तान एंड बांग्लादेश चाइल्ड मोर्टेलिटी वाज 14 परसेंट इन 1988 इंडिया पाकिस्तान बांग्लादेश मोर्टेलिटी ऑफ चाइल्ड अंडर फाइव यू नो 14 परसेंट एवरी ईयर फोर्टीन परसेंट ऑफ चिल्ड्रन वुड नॉट रीच द एज ऑफ फाइव इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन Pakistan was able to bring this number from 14% to 7.4 almost halved it over 30 years mm -hmm. which was good India brought it down to 4 Bangladesh brought it down to 3.5 I'm not talking about USA where it is less than half mm -hmm. so the question is while the first reaction is of shame you know Bangladesh hamara hissa tha humse bure indicators the wo humse double better hoge and what's the difference between 7.4 and 3.5 it means 200000 children a year lives 
अगर हम बांग्लादेश वाले लेवल पे आ जाएं, दो लाख बच्चे पाकिस्तान में हर साल मरने से बच जाएं। सो दैट्स द इम्पैक्ट आई लुक एट दिस एज अ होप इफ इंडियन बांग्लादेश कैन डू दैट इन सिमिलर कल्चर एंड इकोनॉमीज सो कैन No, that's 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 a great one. Uh, a little bit more technical question from Fahad. Um, how do you ensure adequate connectivity for telemedicine in remote localities? Latency, connectivity, and coverage. So, can you give us a little bit overview from a technical infrastructure standpoint on your telemedicine? Sure. So, what we do is we have a camera, HD camera, and an IP line, and we take a two megabit line. It's fiber optic. Um, so. Of all these connections, eighty percent of the places we already have got fiber. In places okay. where fiber is not available, we use a mobile broadband connection, and we find no latency. It's working. We have one spot in Tharparkar where we have got a VSAT, so it does create a little bit of uh, blurring. But after a couple of seconds, it uh, once you zoom in, there's a blur, but it goes out. the challenge is more to do with electricity so when electricity goes down the site is down but when it comes back somebody has to turn it off now what we are experimenting is drs solutions so hopefully and and, and whatever at ever emergency rooms what we have since we have everything is erp based it's hmis everything is in the cloud so in the emergency mm-hmm. rooms we have triple bandwidth हम कहते हैं हमें चार बैंडवे तो होनी चाहिए बिकॉज मुसलमानों को चार का नंबर पसंद है सो सो वी वांट अ फाइबर वी वांट अ जोंग वी यू नो एवरीथिंग बिकॉज दे डू गो डाउन सो एट द सैटेलाइट सेंटर्स इट इज सिंगल कनेक्टिविटी एंड एज वी एक्सपेरिमेंट वी मे क्रिएट अ सेकंड बैकअप बट इवन आउट ऑफ 24 फोर आवर्स इफ दिस साइट इज अप फॉर एटीन टू ट्वेंटी आवर्स वी आर ऑन अगर लाइट वहां पर है ही नहीं तो हम कैमरा ऑन करके क्या देख लेंगे कहानी and uh, i'll connect that into the next one are you looking for any better connectivity options from a technology standpoint from starlink spacex and amazon's cooper i do not know if it was intended for that but i'll just throw it out up there as well sure. so so i'm very glad that the pakistan telemedicine or telehealth scene is becoming active which means we will have more players more vendors available mm-hmm. now we also have to look at the model most of these models are working where they're working with a patient with the doctor it's a business right. to customer model which right. is fine and it is it's providing help now most of the time that is good for opd level consultation or counseling sessions because for serious problem they would say immediately take him to the er i have looked at the manual for doctors that mobilink has launched and when it comes to pediatrics because it's so sensitive they say if they're talking about a child simply ask them take them to a doctor because the liability is huge pakistani laws of prescribing an antibiotic over over camera are still in the gray area so mm-hmm. our model is not business to customer our model is business to business we have doctors at both ends the final decision rests with the doctor on ground so the doc so from a liability point of view so the senior doctor may say i suggest this regimen of medicine but the liability accountability is of the doctor on ground okay. so our model is different and i don't think we will be going into business to customer directly at any given time some of these models work through mid level providers where the patient comes to a place where there's a nurse or a midwife who provides the vitals to the doctor at the third site so i i think this is great service which is happening especially during covid times and especially it's been difficult to reach areas mm-hmm. but what we are trying to do is leverage the existing infrastructure pakistan is 500 government hospitals which are totally free a taxpayers money is going 
paying for the doctors and the nurses and the medicine. What we want to do is go take them on a scale of one to 10 from one to four. And, and that's what we are doing. Uh, as far as technology is concerned, yes, we are. We even talked with Cisco, uh, Khalid Raza at Cisco uh, was my class uh, uh, mate. Uh, so we are in discussion as we go from a 30 network to maybe a 150 or 500 network, we will need a better uh, video call uh, distribution mechanism, which is not too expensive. So we are definitely in consultation. We are looking at solutions from Cisco and Avaya, but we also want to be sure that the solution we get, we are not the guinea pigs. The solution exists in Pakistan. The support mm -hmm. is available in Pakistan, not from Dubai, never from India. The guy will never get a visa. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, so I have a follow-on question from Kashif. What kind, did you build your own HMI or you are using a third-party HMI system? I think we discussed a little bit offline, but uh, yeah. I think that, that's a fair question. What kind of it platform very, you are using? Very important one. So we went through the process. The first couple of years, we were partially computerized, partially manual. So we had forms and people would fill it in and somebody would punch them in. So and we, the first step was making our doctors initial that form. It took us six months. Doctors on our payroll took six months to agree that they will sign it because they were afraid of liability. So, so you know, you, this change of acceptance takes time. So, so once doctors started signing them, so they were accountable what the medicine they prescribed. Then after three years of doing this, we developed an in-house system, Oracle-based, which was computerized and we had modules. We actually were helpful. Um, Indus Hospital gave us their pharmacy module and we built the doctor module around it. So we had an in-house small team, very dedicated. And I've got Ali on the line here. Great job he did, launch it in-house. But at that time we were about five or seven ERs. We <laughs> wanted to go cloud-based and we wanted to go have a solution from a third party because this is not our core strength. So there's a company in Islamabad by the name of Interactive Solutions. Um, and they had the solution which was employed at number of military hospitals. We bought, we got that software, customize it a little bit, and it's been running smoothly. Uh, of course, with all the fights between our team and their team and downtime, whatever, it's never smooth. It is never smooth. But uh, what we say is customize it quickly and get on with it. Um, so now we have at a stage that we have a third party solution. Mm -hmm. um, they also have this ICT-5 uh, certification. So we depend on that. And, and, there are, and we always have a backup plan. As engineers, we always, so there will be times when ER has no light, system crashes, so no problem. Take out the writing pad. The patient should not suffer. The show must go on. Fill that in. Once, you know, when you, at least two or three times a year, you will have a shutdown then you go back and enter that manually. Understood. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, any, any, any other questions? Um, I'll, I'll just ask one more question and maybe add on. I, I see we have a, quite a few GIK alumni over here as well. Masood is online. And I know some TCF friends are also here. Abdullah Jafri, I think, is online as well. Oh, Abdullah, uh, hi. Uh, uh, so uh, how we can help, I'm going back to the question since you're doing a great job. So how we as, 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 as a community can help you definitely, if you need any technology help or any expertise, I, we have a lot of people from Amazon um, and, and, and Google and everywhere else. Um, but on a similar note, I think we discussed about uh, we can sponsor and we can and financially we can help as well. So um, just wanted to highlight that uh, actually GIK alumni will be uh, starting a sponsorship program for one of the blocks. So if anybody is is, is planning or uh, they are motivated after this discussion, uh, just make sure reach out to uh, Dr. Essen or myself, and uh, we can share some some more details how we can engage with this great organization. Um, since I'm I'm. I'm I have a few more things to ask you, Dr. Essen, that with the COVID situation and the nonprofit sector suffering a lot, um, how will, since you're registered as a nonprofit, so how does the sustainability looks like? I, I, I mean, a lot of nonprofits kind of um, 
going through these challenging times and all that. So what is the sustainability model for child life looks like? So sustainability wise, um, we bank on two things. Uh, the Pakistani support, including those in Pakistan, we raise 80% of our funds in Pakistan and 20% from the Pakistani diaspora, especially from the uh, those in USA. And then we have government funding. Uh, but uh, so, for example, in Balochistan, we told the government from day one, if you'll support us, but it's easy to talk, say that and you get funding for the first year and you establish it. If the next year funding is delayed or denied, you don't want to shut down and come back. So you, you build endowment funds. Um, and you also, there's a, also a leap of faith that you have to take. Uh, worst case scenario, what we, our plan Z, not plan B is that we should have enough funding that at least our model of telemedicine and five emergency rooms continue with Pakistani support. If the government funding reduces, we may reduce our footprint, God forbid, but at least we have ring fenced the five ERs of Karachi in the fashion that with the Pakistani support for the last 10 years, we could run that without government support. And the simple reason being is bad times will come. You have to plan for that. So if the government stops giving money for Quetta, we may hand it over back to them, withdraw. And maybe after a couple of years, they, they open up. But the biggest hope is the more government makes it their political capital and the more people are happy with it, it will become difficult for the government to withdraw a service. Mm -hmm. Just like I'll give you an example, Aman Foundation was running an ambulance service in Karachi, mm -hmm. totally funded by Abraj Arif Nakvi, who's now into controversy and disrepute. When his empire was going down, government of Sin said, we cannot let the, the people of Karachi suffer. This is a service. The government stepped in and funded that. So I think this is one benefit of democracy that politicians for the sake of votes, they are they keep um, development projects as a priority. So we mm -hmm. hope children is a soft belly. Children is a, always a priority. So we hope that um, we will be a priority for governments as well as Pakistani diaspora. Sure, sure. No, that, that's, that's a great, Segway. Um, I, I think Ulam Mehman is asking a question which you may have already answered. He's, he's saying that uh, which audio video streaming service do you use? Has the service met your expectations? I, I think you have answered that question that um, already into the session. Um, Actually, uh, we um, for uh, our telemedicine, uh, we use grand stream products over fiber optic, um, we are looking for a more comprehensive solution. And I, I think maybe uh, the, the friends who are on this webinar, if they could connect us with their local office in, in Pakistan, preferably in Karachi, and we could have a dialogue with their, with their teams. As I said, um, we have seen for the nonprofits, it's good to get a solution where you have backup support, where the team has done a couple of installations um, in Pakistan. So we reached out to AKU. They have a very nice telepresence by Cisco. But Cisco, we found that support was mostly coming from Dubai. Um, I see. And, and, you know, so, so we, we would be more comfortable with a, a solution local. Uh, so we, have a, we work with a company called Image Tech in Pakistan. And, uh, they have been responsive. If we say the Mithi site is down, they are there next day. It's six hours drive from Karachi. Mm -hmm. So that's the mm -hmm. service you need. Exactly. No, that's good. That's good. So talking about this telemedicine experience, since your patients, your patients, rural areas may have, so how they perceive telemedicine, I guess, from their oh, perspective. Yeah, thank you. So initially, technology is simple. It's innocent. It's the people at, at the ends which have a problem. The first problem was with the health provider. If I ask somebody as if I don't know it, um, so that uh, hurdle we cross and he said, you learn in the process. Then the patient's impression that the doctor I am talking to is consulting mm -hmm. somebody on the phone, which means that their confidence in that doctor is downgraded. So first of all, it's not, they're not on mobile. They are using an IP phone and we have positioned, we have chiseled a statement. We tell them, aapke bacche ko ek nahi. Do doctor 
हम ये नहीं कहते कि सीनियर डॉक्टर वो है फिर वो लोकल डॉक्टर को छोटा पांडा कहेगा वो तो कहते हैं आपके बच्चे को दो डॉक्टर देख रहे हैं एक यहाँ पे और एक दूर से सो 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 दैट्स दैट्स इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वॉट द डॉक्टर इन कराची से पेशेंट कांट हेयर दैट डॉक्टर में से भाई ये ये नहीं करना था यू नो ये चेक नहीं किया तुमने अभी तक यू नो सो सो दैट इज अ कॉन्वर्सेशन प्लस वी एव फाउंड दैट द डॉक्टर इन रूरल सिंध आर वेरी रिस्पेक्टफुल दे they are very open to receiving feedback i see so the ego That's issue has, has not come out kehte karachi ka doctor jaise karachi ke doctor ko agar jab john hopkins ka consult karta hai to kehte hai sir thank you sahi <laughs> sahi no that that that's a good good input because that that's the cultural barrier that can play into whatever technology or solution uh, we, we are bringing into the lives so that's good that's good to know um just one one more question coming up i is uh, since you, you you are you are the front end but you have a huge team so 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 a, a successful organization cannot run without a good team so so what give us give us an overview of your team and 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 what is your team comprised of what are the challenges how they keep motivated and how you are managing your team as well sure um so we start with the board Uh, we have a nine-member okay. board, which is business professionals, medical doctors. Couple of them are in the U.S. actually, and all very passionate Pakistanis who are successful in their career. Then they want to give uh, back. Um, when it comes to management, I've been around for seven years, um, and I have a team of head of the department. So there's one who heads operations, who's mm-hmm. been twenty years into hospital management, uh, five years actually, eight years with Child Life. We have a clinical uh, head. Uh, who has been with us for eight years, and uh, his best skill is not just clinical, but his uh, his persuasive skills of dealing with doctors, resolving their grievances. We have um, head of finance uh, who, had, who who leads a team of finance executives. We have a communications department, very important. We have a head of internal audit, a head of HR, a head of technology. so that's the the senior team that reports to me but the okay. heart of this team is an administrator at each er so at each emergency room we have a team of 100 people headed by an administrator those are 10 of them i call them the the mini chief executives they are the real management line and we have seen these people grow up from administrator to general manager to head of departments so we do job rotation as well the, the team is about 1000 people out of which we have about 180 doctors about 250 nurses and 100 pharmacists so this is on the clinical side then we have okay. about 100 and plus uh, people who are patient support and administration people managing traffic flow we have zakat welfare officers uh, a, a force for security and janitorial teams and maintenance so that's the organization structure so total about a thousand people payroll okay that's good one one last people, people i've got three people who are ready to succeed me <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah succession planning is definitely something for sure we all need to be aware of uh one one question coming up in the chat is uh can you give an update on the financials how 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 are you doing with the fundraising and what is the magnitude that you need every year because i think we will be closing in next couple of minutes so i want to leave that thought with everybody if uh, they are thinking of uh, and what are the options available sure uh, w- very simply we treat about a million people a million children at 7 dollars child so our current budget is 7 million dollars which turns out to be about a billion rupees in pakistan with the current okay. exchange rate about half of which we are able to raise and the other half comes from the government so that's okay. why we say you know and the ideally i would like this half that we raise from pakistan and diaspora to be 100% so that our dependence on government is not there and then we can go out and do pims and mayo hospital or lady reading faster on our own uh, but at this stage of economy so th- so that's what what we are doing so uh, we are about a 1.1 billion rupee company 7 million dollars and half of it comes from our fundraising the other half comes from government okay government and and, and, and singhan baluchistan 
right, right. So uh, you are taking zakat donations and 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 everything, right? The, uh, and we can we can share the uh, we can pass on the slide a little bit uh, so that everybody can take a look sure. at your website. So it's basically everyone. It's Child Life Foundation um, uh, is the website. You can Google it. You can find um, some some good YouTube videos. Um, I was I was uh, looking into it. There are two great videos. One was featured at PBS uh, and I shared the link in the chat window and uh, I will definitely uh, uh, will be posting um, all the details as well. So um, all in all, uh, all you, you have all the zakat eligibility and, and uh, as I mentioned, um, there are some corporate matchings available as well. So if you want to help or you want to reach out to Dr. Essen, um that uh, that will be available as well um i just want to close it dr essen um i think we are pretty much uh, almost at the at the at the end of the hour uh, people are still joining i i think that, that's good maybe something going on in pakistan cricket match is still ongoing that's why they may be <laughs> hello thank you so much so, uh, uh, no. you say yeah. masood can say a word because he was a uh, common connection you know He's a quiet yes. guy, you know. Yeah, Masood is up here as well, or maybe he's left. I can't maybe be. He, he will be penalized for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's there. He's there, I think. Uh, maybe we'll see. But uh, I want to thank on behalf of Park Lodge and all the collaboration organizations and GK Illumini. Thank you, Dr. Asun, for your time. Um, and you are doing a great job. And let us know how we all can help you, basically. Um, and and uh, looking forward, I think you're saving and uh, doing a great job. Um, any any last comments from your side? Any? Please pray for us. Thank you. This is this is our duty. Uh, we are all in this together. We may be at the face of it, but thank you. Even the seminars by spreading word is great, and a um, heartfelt thank you for for this platform. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, and stay safe. And Dr. Asim, thank you. Stay safe as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.